All right, now, let's take away B. And let's say that, again, both A and B started at a crest. Both wave A and wave B started at a crest. But now they're not moving parallel to each other anymore. You can see that the two waves are not moving parallel. Again, I'm not drawing the wave, I'm just drawing the path. Um, can we figure out what point in the oscillation will wave B in after it's gone 36 meters in this direction? Yeah, that's crest. Yeah, the direction doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I drew these two parallel before. All that matters is they travel the same distance. If they travel the same distance, um, then they're both going to be uh, still in phase with each other. And just to give one more example of that. Just to give one more example, now let's do an experiment where they only go 30 meters. So I'll shorten this line over here, just 30 meters. 30 meters, so they're both going 30 meters but in different directions. They both started in phase, so are they both going to end up in phase? If they both go to 30 meters, will they both end up in phase now? Yeah. Yeah, and what, where will they be in their oscillations now? Troughs. Now they'll both be in troughs. So it doesn't matter whether they end up at crests or troughs or at equilibrium or somewhere in between, as long as they're going the same distance, if you start, if two waves start in phase, they're going to end up in phase. Again, we're assuming these are kind of same type of wave with the same wavelength all along. We're assuming, say, they both have a wavelength of 12 meters. We've been doing that all along. Okay. All right, so the direction doesn't matter. Ah, so this is the key idea. It's not the direction that they travel that matters, it's the path length. What matters is the path length. If you want to know what the phase relation is between two waves, you have to compare their path length, or you have to focus on what we could call the path length difference. That's going to be the key concept that we'll keep coming back to today, the path length. In this case that I have on the board, there is no path length difference. So they both ended up in phase with each other, since there's zero path length difference. All right, now I'm going to extend this again, so that actually now this is ending up at 36 meters. So wave A ends at 30 meters, but wave, uh, wave A is moving 30 meters, but wave B is moving 36 meters. So um, if you look at both of them at the endpoints, are they going to be in phase or out of phase? If you compare just the endpoints. Just comparing the endpoints. It'll be perfect, yeah. yeah, because this one was at a trough, and what's wave B going to be at? All right, we already figured that out because uh, at 30 meters is the uh, trough, and we go another half wavelength, we're back to the crest over here. Okay, so then I think this is the first time we've seen that these two waves, the two have two separate waves that are out of phase with each other. So when would two separate waves be out of phase uh, with each other? Uh, well, when one of them is going half a wavelength longer than the other. When one of them is going half a wavelength longer than the other. It'll be 180 degrees. 180 degrees out of phase. That's right. Let's just keep wave A here at 30 meters. Let's say wave A is going 30 meters. But let's like, let wave B go further. So how far does wave B have to continue going before it gets back into phase with wave A? Past the 36 meters. 42. Yeah, if it goes to the 42 meters, then, whoops, they would both be troughing here. And you can see why that, uh, and you can see what, what's happened here. What's the path length difference now? Yeah, there's from 30 to 42 is a 12 meter difference, which is one wavelength. There's a one wavelength difference in their paths, therefore they're out of phase. If there's a one wavelength difference in their paths, they'd be out of phase. Are they out or are they in now? I missed up. Right. Okay. Yeah. I should have said there's a one wavelength uh, difference in their paths, so they're back, uh, uh, so they're in phase. That's right.
So we already saw that they're going to be in phase when um, uh, there's a zero path length difference. <clears throat> if their path lengths are the same, they're in phase. Or if there's a one wavelength difference in their paths, they would be in phase. What's the next point that B is going to be in phase with A? If it keeps going, but we, we keep comparing to point at wave A that ends here, where, where can we let wave B go to that will get back into phase with wave A? 54 is the next trough, because that's another wavelength. And then what would the path length difference be? It would be 24 meters, which is two wavelengths. And when's the next path length difference going to be? When there's a path length, uh, when's the next time they're in phase when there's a path length difference of three lambda, or four lambda, or five lambda? And I guess you can go on forever like this. So how would a mathematician say this? Uh, well, a mathematician would say that they're in phase when the path length difference is m times lambda, right? And then m can be anything from zero up to infinity. Or you might have seen that formula in the, uh, in the chapter, basically. Um, so that's where the m is coming from. It just is talking about how many wavelengths uh, difference there is in their paths. Uh, so notice, uh, so this number here could stand for m. So they're in phase when the path length difference is m times lambda. Two waves are in phase. Uh, all along, we're assuming that they started in phase. All, these, all the problems we're doing here, we're assuming that they started in phase. Well, then they're going to end in phase. They're both going to end in phase if their path length difference is m times lambda. And m could be 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, on to infinity. So what does m stand for? It stands for the number of wavelengths uh, difference there is in their paths. And it has to be a whole number. This is what we could call an index. Anytime you're working with an index like this, you have to um, ask yourself whether the index could be zero. Well, this is a case where the index could be zero. What does it mean if the index is zero here? Well, it means that there's no difference in their paths. That means they both travel the same distance. Obviously, if they travel the same distance, they'd be in phase. So the interesting thing here is waves do not have to travel the same distance to be in phase. The interesting thing is they don't have to travel the same distance to be in phase. Um, one of them could travel longer as long as um, there's a, a whole number of wavelengths difference between the paths. So we know that at this point, if they both went the same distance, they would be in phase. So how far should we let uh, wave B so that it will end um, out of phase with wave A? Because then it would be cresting when this is dropping. So what would their path length difference be now? longer than the other, then it makes sense that they're half a cycle out of phase. All right, let's keep wave B going. I'm comparing it to wave A here. What's the next point that wave B will be uh, totally out of phase with wave A? 48. 48. That is, you just now, you added another full wavelength to where it was here. So one and a half wavelengths difference. And what would the next point be? That's 60. What goes on the parentheses now? Two and a half. Yeah. So basically, 
Once they're out of that, they get out of phase when you let one of them go half a wavelength longer than the other. They get out of phase when you let one of them go half a wavelength longer than the other. And then if you keep adding whole wavelengths to one of them, it's going to stay out of phase. So once we've got this out of phaseness from the one half wavelength, we can keep adding whole wavelengths from that point on and uh, to, to one of the waves, and it's going to keep staying out of phase. So what would be the next in the series? Three, Three plus a half. 